Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. Right now I'm exploring the Ocean Plastics Lab. It's a two-week exhibit at the, um, outside the front of the Museum of Nature in Ottawa. And basically I want to walk you through it in this video to talk about this huge problem that we have with uh, plastics uh, in the ocean. So there's all kind of booths set up, it's free, it's outside, it's running until August 12th if you live in Ottawa or the area and you want to uh, see it. So basically what we have here is um, this display here talks about all of the different types of plastic. So we've been mass producing plastic since the 1950s, 7.8 billion metric tons have been produced to date. Over, since 2014, there's about 300 million metric tons that are produced every year. So this, is the, uh, this triangle is a recycling symbol, and it shows that the plastic's recyclable and identifies it. So we've got polypropylene for plastic bags, food wrappers, caps and lids, fishing gear, etc. And it, it's 21% of all mass-produced plastics ever made are basically polypropylene. Um, polyethylene is the most common. So it's, it's uh, think of your fishing line, straws, spray bottles, toothpaste tube, plastic bags, buckets, wrapping foils. This stuff floats um, and it's got the symbols O2, O4. Uh, polystyrene, yogurt containers, styrofoam. So polystyrene, styrofoam, basically. The stuff floats about 10%, slightly over 10% of all mass-produced plastics are polystyrene. PVC, okay, if, if you're a plumber, you know what PVC is. It's used for uh, pipes, drainage pipes, uh, toys, baby goods, flooring, swimming rings, tube records, etc. 12% of all mass-produced plastics ever. Uh, we also have polyurethane, which is uh, the memory foam, uh, condoms, there you go, polyurethane. Uh, this stuff is negatively buoyant and sinks. About 10%, just slightly over 10% of all mass produced plastics. PET, polyethylene turf, uh, turf phthalate, uh, negatively buoyant, 10% or so. And then PPA, polyamide, polyester, and acrylic fibers, 12%. Okay, so these are the seven most important plastic types. Now, plastics that go into the environment are initially, um, they're, they're classified as, as two ways. Macroplastics are, are um, larger than five millimeters in size. They're manufactured that way. Microplastics are intentionally produced in sizes smaller than five millimeters. So microfibers, microbeads, plastic pellets. And these are shipped, these are easily shipped around um, in uh, shipping containers and uh, they can be melted down into forming plastic objects. Those are the primary um, forms and then the macroplastics get broken down in the environment and when they become smaller than five millimeters, they're, they're, the, they're microplastics. Um, now, how are these things transported? Wind, fishing boats, rivers, wastewater, littering ships. And this display shows that uh, how, how the, some of the routes for these plastics to go from um, our usage to uh, being disseminated in the oceans. And then what are the effects on creatures in the oceans? Um, of course, they can be eaten. They can entangle marine creatures and they can actually become habitat for, for different creatures. And uh, there's all kinds of interesting displays here about how the health of organisms is affected. And, uh, you know, we're putting ever more amounts of plastic into the ocean, and this is, this is a huge deal. So, um, this, for example, shows um, that different colors of plastic can attract different types of fish. So, you know, a fish, like, like on the left here, I don't know if you, it's not too clear, you have a copepod, which is a bluish tinge color, and then you have a microplastic right next to it here, and they look very similar. So a fish is going to come along, 
it's going to eat the uh, you know what it thinks is a copepod and ingest the the plastic. And uh, you know how does plastic affect uh, the stomach? Of course, it's not good. It it, it can cause um, it can puncture internal organisms. If it can't be excreted, then it fills up the stomach, resulting in less room for food, results in poor nutrition of the animal, and even death once the stomach is completely blocked. So here's some, in the center here, we have some plastic um, items that were found in the stomach of a, a dead a goose-beaked whale that beached in, uh, on an island near Bergen, Norway. Um, and just uh, to give you an idea of the effects of plastic, it says over 1,400 species have been affected by plastic litter. Um, and these are the ways here that it's mostly affecting the, the, the marine life. Thir about 36% ingestion, 30 to 30.5% entanglement, colonization, so this is marine creatures that are, that are uh, building nests, etc. in the plastic. Um, cover it and then some other interactions here so mostly it's things it's mostly the plastics are eaten by creatures where they entangle them so I want to show you here it's not just um, large organisms large marine organisms that are affected by plastic so so here we have, there's a whole bunch of um, images here. And what you can see is, you can see um, different, so the oocytes of Pacific oyster, crustacean larva, different algae, water fleas, uh, sperm of the Pacific oyster, dinoflagellates, and mussels. And what it's showing is there's uh, fluorescent microscopy being done here. And what it does is, It'll, it'll, different things show up as different colors. So, for example, the, the red up here, and the green here, and the yellow here, and the green up here, and the, uh, the, the red here, and the green here, so these dots here, and the uh, red here. These are all microplastics. These are all in, in these various uh, organisms. So of course, obviously, this is very detrimental to these organisms. So even in plankton, even in very, very small creatures that are the base of the food chain in the oceans, these plastics are affecting their life cycle and uh, you know harming these, these organisms. So, so this is an example here of uh, this is showing the microplastics in the intestine, which are green and blue, and this is in, uh, you know, very, very small, these are, these are uh, water fleas, actually, okay, so there's very, very tiny water fleas, and an experiment involved feeding them some microplastics and trying to, seeing different ways of detecting them using fluorescent uh, spectroscopy, etc. Um, and what you can see, so you can see the different um, types of um, plastics and stuff that are, they, they show up as a different color, they fluoresce as a different color uh, from the organism. So we can use those methods to detect uh, how, much, how, much, how many plastics are in things. So I'll just continue to uh, walk around here. OJ, as I call it. Okay, so... You know, this right here, these are some of the items that have been found in various oceans. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a very nice display. We've got shipping, this is basically a shipping container. Okay, there's the wall, all these different plastic items. And, uh, it's estimated that 5.25 trillion plastic particles are afloat at sea. Now, for some reason, in the French translation, trillion became a billion, so that's incorrect. Incorrect. The, it's actually trillions is, is the correct number. Some, some French uh, translator tried to downplay the, uh, the uh, extent of the problem.
Okay, so this is another uh, section of the exhibit. So it basically shows how how are plastics transported in different regions. Okay, so what we have here is the ocean gyres. So this movie uh, shows how over time the plastic is concentrated in these uh, five major ocean gyres. And, uh, you know, one question is, is how long does plastic last in the ocean? So I figured out how to work this thing. So just click on here. So cigarette butts, uh, five years in the ocean. This is a uh, fishing line. Okay. Fishing line. Uh, 600 years, up to 600 years in the ocean. Hardly, you know, it takes forever to degrade. Uh, milk carton, uh, three months. So that goes pretty quickly. I was a bit surprised at that one. Any guesses on uh, Coke can, Pop can, Lulu can, that is 200 years. Newspaper, six weeks. Prop can, plastic bottle rather, 450 years, and uh, plastic bag up to 20 years. Okay, so, so all these items uh, basically last a long time. This is another movie just showing how the plastic is carried by ocean currents and so on. Okay, so what are we going to do about this? What are some of the solutions? Okay, so first of all, um, microfibers. Okay, so these are still problems. Textiles contain um, microfibers. So we're talking about fleece, socks, t-shirts. Many other of these items are made of synthetic fibers like polyester, acrylic, and nylon. When you wash them, little parts of these fibers are shed. These microfibers uh, then go out in the, in, in the, through the drain and, and uh, they'll go to water purification water treatment, wastewater treatment plant, depends on how good the technology is, um, but the, the effluent coming out of those plants goes into rivers, which can then go into the ocean. So this is a huge problem. Um, one of the ways that we can reduce the problem is to try to recycle uh, different, take different plastics. Instead of going into the waste and out, to recycle them. Okay, so that shows that. And this is just showing some of the, you know, one of the problems is this, all these single use uh, plastics, right? Single use plastics are used, they're discarded. They end up in, you know, landfills. A lot of them make their way into the oceans and things. Okay, so um, every year, 4.8 to 12.7, billion kilograms of plastic and up in the oceans okay so that would be in one hour the equivalent of 35 shipping containers goes into the ocean in one day 850 shipping containers go into the ocean and in a year up to 310,000 shipping container equivalents end up in the ocean and I think that gives you the 12.7 billion kilograms um, that would be the upper end of, of this range, or no, it's actually, it's, sorry, it's based on the average input range. So it's based on an average of 8.7 billion kilograms, which is the average of 4.8 to and, and 12.7. One 20-foot shipping container can hold 28,230 kilograms of plastic. So the numbers are just staggering, and, uh, you know, we really have to... Um, address this problem. So thank you for listening.